powerful American leaders who think 10 and 20 years out and uh, who ask themselves, is it really in America's interest to provoke 1.6 billion Muslims, uh, extremely emotional, volatile people, uh, who are, who, who, because of their oil wealth, unlike the Vietnamese or the Laotians or the Cambodians, uh, with this enormous oil wealth, are in a position to uh, acquire, build nuclear weapons, are in a position to uh, conduct 911. Is that really in our interest? I think that's, uh, that should be the debate in this country. Now, unfortunately, uh, the Democrats started to say that under Bush, but as you've noticed, since Obama came into power, because he's now the leader, that argument has suddenly disappeared. As I said, the left-wing position was to just assassinate, <laughs> which Biden was representing yeah. in that debate. He's the dove up there, yeah. the guy so that presided people, over people, the Iraq hearings in the Senate in 2002 that excluded any dissent whatsoever from them. Yeah, so the reasonable really moderate Joe Biden. Is, uh, is uh, you know, try to tell the truth, uh, hope that people will wake up, uh, and, and that our country doesn't go completely insane. I mean, you know, the... With all due respect to the Tea Partiers, because I really do empathize with their concerns and feel the same way. I actually think I could sit down and talk. If there was a chance, I'd love to sit down and talk with them. But presently, what they're saying is just irrational. It's just not true. It's just silly. I mean, to, to, to blame uh, the economic crisis on government, when obviously it was Wall Street, <laughs> to blame the environmental problem on government, when obviously it was BP, well, and now, come on, now, list. I mean, you were the one who just told the story about how Alan Greenspan, who, if I remember right, was a government official, in fact, the czar of the currency, was the one who went to Congress to prevent the regulator from doing her basic yeah. job investigating their fraud. I mean, don't tell me that was just Wall Street. I mean, yeah, who is who is well, the well, Treasury well, and the Fed anyway but Wall Street? It's all well, one organization. There's no real distinction. I mean, look at Geithner, yeah. Geithner and Summers right now. They're doing exactly what Wall Street wants. Um, not exactly, because they managed to piss them off at the same time. <laughs> I guess I would just argue with the Tea Partiers. Don't argue with them out of criticizing the state. Argue with them about criticizing the weak and the powerless and the voiceless, the Mexicans and the homosexuals and the Muslims, because that is what the powerful, that's what the state and what the, the right-wing elite want them to, to do, is to not focus on the bailouts and not focus on the empire, but instead to focus on you know the weakest of their neighbors, which after all, we're talking about right-wingers who like to be bullies and like to win easy fights against powerless people. So, you know, we want to I would say, don't dissuade them from hating the state. Dissuade them from hating the rest of us, you know? Yeah, well, if you can. Yeah, I, all I can do at this point, I mean, my only approach is to, I've given up making the moral argument. I've given up making the constitutional argument. I, I, I've given up making the argument that all this is undemocratic and so forth. I think the only thing that maybe we could agree on is whether is this really in our self-interest? Let me just. Since we're talking about, we started out talking about my article. Let me let me just read you this quote from the um, New York Times after the Times Square uh, bombing. Uh, one American official, intelligence official, said these attacks on two. The, this was after we had murdered two Pakistani Taliban leaders. Uh, have made it personal for the Pakistani Taliban. Taliban. So it's no wonder they are beginning to think about how they can strike back at targets here. Now, is it really in our interest? See, now the, the Cheney argument is, well, oh, my God, they're Pakistani Taliban. They are going to kill us anyway, no matter what we do. So we might as well go kill them. Well, that's absurd. The Pakistani Taliban have a lot on their plate. They're not interested in the United States unless we come to them and start killing and murdering, uh, you know, both their leaders and countless civilians. Now we make it personal for them. And what, what's going on today is the Obama Petraeus policy. And the height of insanity is making it personal for millions and millions of Muslims to want to strike back at the United States. They have a culture of revenge. I mean, that's part of the Pashtun Wali. You know, that's the uh, I kill my father, I'm going to kill yours. Uh, and, and they have the means to do it in today's globalized world. They have the money, all this Saudi money floating around and all the oil money. Uh, so that's that's where I'm just putting my cards on that argument that maybe – People can understand that their own children are likely to be killed or are the increasing chance of being killed by Muslim extremists 
unless we come to some kind of rapprochement with the Muslim world, or at least stop killing them. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I got to tell you, Fred, I, I'm afraid that I agree with you that that's the only argument that might work, that referring to the Constitution or to basic human decency or to, uh, you know, any other thing other than, you know, what's good for the individual listener at any given moment is basically worthless. And it's too bad that it's true. I hope we're both wrong about that, but I don't really think we are. And and I think with that, we better go ahead and leave it. But I, I really appreciate your time on the show today. And I, I really uh, could not recommend this article uh, highly enough to the listeners. It's called Mass Assassination. One last word. I'd suggest you go to the very bottom of the article. Click on the video clip on Dwayne Claridge, who we've unleashed now on Pakistan. Oh, ah, yeah. CIA station chief who... Uh, uh, is responsible for hundreds of thousands of deaths in Latin America. Uh, we've unleashed him on Pakistan now, and you'll see his face. He says, we'll intervene whenever we decide it's in our national security interest, and if you don't like it, lump it. Get used to it, world. That's what the, that's what the world sees of us. They don't hear the bomb, bomb speeches go over their heads. <laughs> Most of these Pakistanis have not even hear his speeches. They certainly don't believe them. We are unleashing vicious, murderous assassins who kill at will all over the world, and boy, if you don't, if you don't think 911 was, as I said in my article, even if you want to say that uh, 911 was, we didn't do anything to provoke 911 for the last 10 years, uh, and increasingly we're killing hundreds of, I mean, thousands of Muslims, depriving millions of people of their homes. If you don't think there's going to be a blowback to that, you're literally nuts. So that's my final word. Right on. Well, yeah, and I, I especially appreciate you pointing that out. I guess I just had the uh, printer version here. I didn't realize that you had the embedded YouTube on the page there. That's good. Yeah, take and a it, look at that clip from Dewey Claridge. Mm -hmm. One more time yeah. for the audience. The article is called Mass Assassinations, Lie at the Heart of America's Military Strategy in the Muslim World. I, I strongly urge all of you all to read it. And thanks very much again for your time on the show today. Okay. Everybody, that's Fred Bronfman from Alternet.org.